Hi, how you guys doing? Welcome back to Wrestling With Finance here on the YouTubes. And we are talking today about something that is a huge pet peeve of me. And if you clicked on this video, you pretty much know what it is. And you're either very angry with me right now, or you're going, yeah, I agree. And that is my abject hatred for state lotteries. There are a ton of reasons why I do not, I, I've never, just even as a kid, in like the lottery or the even the concept of the scratch offs and all that stuff and i'm gonna tell you this i'm gonna tell you why and by the end of this video you probably if you're if you're a person who's buying a lot of those you might want to think twice about it but again we'll save that for the end of the video before i get too far into this though some ways to not waste money is by getting free stuff and i've got free stuff down in the description box below if you have never had amazon prime there's a 30-day free trial available down there for you if you've never invested in the stock market you can get two free stocks from webull using the affiliate link down below and depositing up to 100 dollars those stocks could be worth anywhere up to 1850 as far as their value of the stock so that's way better than you might do for the lottery most of you and of course if you're into crypto you can try out my affiliate link for blockfi and get crypto get up to six percent interest per month compounded on your bitcoin ethereum and other coins as well so definitely check out all those links down in the description box below and help yourself out to some free stuff now on to the top the main topic here which is mainly why i have this the, the lottery the concept of it scratch offs that whole thing really really disturbs me and i think it kind of stemmed i do remember as a kid when you know my parents would take me around or i would go when i was older and i would get on my bike back when kids used to be able to do this you would get on your bike and you go to like the, the the corner store or the highs or whatever you know to buy magazines because again that's what we did back in the day you know comic books and all that kind of stuff so you go there or play the video game cabinet and when you go there and you'd always see the people obsessively standing in line buying lottery tickets lottery tickets lottery tickets lottery tickets and more lottery tickets and very early on i understood what the lottery was and i always thought it was like that just, just seems like a waste of money if you're doing it seriously it's outside of it like just a passive thing like you know just like gambling like somebody goes to vegas for a weekend but they don't do it every single day all the time those people i kind of worry about and the real thing that kind of bothers me about it is that the people that spend the most on the lottery which is essentially a tax if you really think about it because the money's going to the government but the people that spend the most on it are the people who have the least amount of money it's usually working class people who are making around 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars a year. And above that, they're the ones who are spending a higher percentage of their income on buying scratch offs and lottery tickets and lotto tickets than people with higher incomes. So it uh, many people have said that the state lotteries are effectively a uh, just another tax on the poor. And that really is what it is. They just kind of tricked you into doing it. Think about it. You are paying you. If you're a person and there's a lot of people I know, they do this every Friday. They go to the gas station, they go to wherever and they sit there and they fill out all this stuff. They spend like a good long period of time filling out Kino tickets. Uh, they do, they buy all the scratch offs and scratch them off and they go out and, and they're just like hunkered by the counter next to the poor clerk. Who's got to run their tickets and run them real fast and come on, come on, hurry up. And you know, they got other customers, but you know, the other customers can't get served because this person's got a whole stack of scratch offs that they want to have checked. And which is another reason why I don't like it. But the main reason I don't like it though, is that that person, again, when you see them, they're typically a person, they're typically older and they typically don't have a lot of money and they're hoping to get rich quick. And this goes to my overall, and I'll do another video about this in the future, but my abhorrence for get, get rich quick schemes and all those gurus on YouTube that are telling you, just follow my free course and just click on the link down below and you'll be able to pay $97 and do this thing that probably wasn't going to work, but I guarantee you it'll work for you. I mean, it's kind of the same thing with the lottery. Now, of course, somebody has to win the lottery. So for that one person out of 1.5 million who actually wins the big jackpot and, and we'll talk about what happens with that later on, most everybody else, 
you might be lucky if you break even on it. And I live here in Baltimore, Maryland, and they started the $30 ticket thing, which I think they got from Massachusetts. And the $30, they, so it's a giant $30 scratch off that as a lot more people are buying or started buying. And the funny thing about it is when you actually look at the numbers, people are buying more of those because the chances of you winning are better than like the $1 and $2 tickets. But at the same time, the house always wins. And the deceptive thing about it is that you'll pay a $30 ticket and you might get the $30 back and you go, ooh, and it feels like big because, and that's the lore of having these larger cost tickets is that, oh, I got $30 back. That's a lot of money, but you spend $30. So you're even, so you're gonna take that $30 and you're gonna spend it again. And the next time you might not win. Okay, let me try it again. Next time you might not win. All right, let me try it again. Oh, I won $40 this time. Oh, I'm, and then you feel like, and like mentally you feel like you're ahead, but you're really behind. In fact, the estimate is that for every $30 that you're spending on tickets, you may maximum make $24 back out of it. So, you know, that's a rate that any house is gonna take all day long. That's a $6 profit, basically, essentially, when you average it out for every $30 ticket that they sell. The percentages are worse, of course, for the $1 and $2 tickets and the $5 tickets and the three three number draw and the four number draw and a Powerball and all this other stuff. Again, essentially, for the average person, you you may win back a little bit to keep you in the game, but overall, you're ultimately losing money. And if you're a person who doesn't have a lot of money, that's a not really a good thing to do. But yet again, especially in my experience in my life, it's always the people who don't have a lot of money who are spending the most on these tickets, which, you know, I'm not going to quite go to. That's the reason why they're still poor, but bad money habits are the reason why they're poor. It's not just a lottery thing. There's a lot of bad money habits. And that's not the only reason why people are poor because there's a lot of other circumstances and issues and we can get into that. That's a whole political issue. But for the most part, your ability to climb out of the hole that you may already be in is severely lessened when you continue to do bad money habits like this, expecting to get rich quick. You got to get that kind of out of your head if you're a person that does that. It, like if you're if you're not making if you make like 15, 20, 30,000 dollars a year and you're, you know, you're not really doing well, you kind of struggling to pay the rent and everything else, so you got like a whole bunch of uh, court fines that you have to pay off that the gov you're trying to hide from the government so they don't find you to come do it. Um, it's just not a good route. And I know the, 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 the feeling is that, oh, I'm never going to do anything because I've been in this rut for since I was a teenager and in my 20s, 30s, 40s, sometimes 50s and 60s. I'm never going to actually make anything more than like the $35,000 at these low level jobs that I'm doing. So this is my only way to actually, you know, make any real money. And they have, and, you know, they sit and they dream about it and everything else. And it's, it's, it's really sad and depressing. And the reason why I don't like it is it takes advantage of people's sadness. And not only does it not give them any hope to get out of it on their own, but it also kind of keeps them at that level, feeding back into the system that very well is part of the reason why they're in there in the first place. By comparison, say, like, I think they said the average American spent, the, the, the rates vary. Uh, it's anywhere from $180 a month to, you know, $1,000 a year or whatever. But just say you spent, 50, let's just say it's $1,500 a year that you spend on scratch-offs, lottery tickets, lotto, et cetera, et cetera. You're probably, you're, you're going to have a loss unless you win big, which again is extremely rare that you're going to do that you're still going to be at a loss with that money. Whereas even though there is no guarantee with what I talk about on this uh, channel about investing in real estate or investing or in stocks, investing in bonds, money market accounts, uh, you know, cryptocurrency, whatever it is, there's no guarantee on that. But for the last 40 years, <laughs> you know, the, the line's been going up and at some point in time it's going to go down, but I, you know, the, the chances of it being as bad as your rate of return from the lottery is, it's not even close. If you took that thousand or fifteen hundred dollars a year that you spent on lottery tickets, and you bought some stocks, or you put it in a good high yield savings account, or you bought some crypto, whatever it is, you you basically invested the money in something that's going to give you a return. 
or more likely to give you a return, you probably could wind up with a hell of a lot more money. I think after they say like after 30 years of that raid, you could, you would you know that money would be worth like twelve thousand dollars. That fifteen hundred would be worth twelve thousand dollars, whereas opposed to basically almost having nothing, or maybe you won a three hundred dollar scratch off one time, but you still spent fifteen hundred dollars for a year. So at the end of the day, what do you want? I know this. I know the lottery one is the instant gratification and the thrill and of the gambling and everything else. But ultimately, if you don't have a lot of money, maybe you need to, to think about doing the investing thing over the gambling thing maybe and if that wasn't enough to kind of really kind of turn you off to the idea here's another one that's kind of bad is that even a lot of the people that win and i'm sure a lot of you've heard the story a lot of people that win big on the lottery in the scratch off game within a few years wind up losing all the money because they still have bad spending habits and you've heard of this you've heard of celebrities that have gone through this infamously MC Hammer, Mike Tyson, and people like that have had a lot of money and then somehow blew it all. And to us, the average people, the normal people in the world, it's like, you had $500 million. How did you blow $500 million in a couple of years? But again, if you have bad money habits, if you're just in the gambling, and it's, I mean, because that's the mentality of the person who won on this one. They're like, oh, okay, I'm going to win again. So the likelihood that they're going to gamble with a large portion of that $500 million thinking they, they can make it grow and grow again and they're going to get lucky like that again often leads to it. And then again, just at the end of the day, just bad money habits. It doesn't matter how much money you have. If you make $20,000 a year or you get a $2 million payout from a scratch off, if you have bad money habits that keep you broke, you're gonna to continue to have bad money habits to keep you broke, even if you wind up with a lot of money at one period of time. Eventually, it's gonna go down the toilet and you'll be back to where you are. And again, the statistics on that are kind of astonishing for the amount of lottery winners who wind up being broke in only a matter of years. It's not all doom and gloom though. I'm not saying don't play the lottery at all because it's a recreational thing. It's supposed to be a recreational thing, but again, the way the government system, the way the whole system works, with the lottery thing, again, it really is an extra tax on the poor. I mean, really, if you look at the numbers, that's what it is. It's just another way to collect tax, but it's a way to collect, it's a way for the government to collect tax by getting you wanting to pay it, which is an ingenious idea from the government, but for, because it affects people who don't have the money to begin with, that's what kind of bothers me about it. But I am just one person. You don't have to agree with me or not agree with me, but I do think if you are a logical person thinking about this without emotion and what I just showed you and talked to you about, you might think twice about spending so much money on the lottery. And you, I mean, again, like I said, it doesn't mean that you have to stop playing the lottery. I mean, say if you spend $10 a week on the lottery, maybe just start out with pay, saying instead of the whole $10 going to scratch-offs, maybe I'll buy $5 of scratch-offs and I'll take the other $5 and I'll go and invest it in something on one of these apps that are so easy to get today. I mean, again, you can do it on Cash App for God's sakes. So maybe put $5 in the Cash App and $5 into the scratch-off and then over time, See what see which one comes out better for you after a couple years and go with that one. But that's our personal finance video for this week. Thank you guys for checking out Wrestling With Finance here on YouTube. If you like this video, you can go take a coin and go scratch off that like button down. And while you're there, scratch off the subscription button and you might as well get the bell at the same time and just knock them all out in a row. And it'll let you know when I have new videos up, it'll keep you subscribed to the channel and it definitely helps out the channel and the video be seen by more people who probably could use this advice. Definitely share it with those people as well. Anyway, thank you guys for watching the video. I will see you guys next time here for more financial news, tips, and countdowns here on Wrestling With Finance. Have a good day.